Today, we'll make a beautiful logo with curved text using Affinity Designer. Let's start by making a frame for our logo to go inside of. I'll select the Ellipse tool over here, and then I'll click and drag out an oval. Now, I don't want this to be too long and skinny, otherwise our text will be pretty cramped in there, so I'm going to make it more rounded. Then I'm going to center this in our document. Make sure that you have snapping up here turned on. Then you can just hover over the top to position it into the center position. Now I'm just going to adjust the colors. I don't want this to have a fill, so over here in the color panel, I'll have the fill selected, and then choose no fill. Then I'll come over to the stroke, and I'm going to choose a golden yellow color. Then over in the context toolbar, I'll just click here, and now I can change the stroke options. So I'll go ahead and increase the width. I think six looks like a good size for this. So now we have a nice frame for our logo to go inside of. I do think this yellow color is a bit bright, so I'm just going to select the move tool to select the oval, and then I can go ahead and change this color. And we can do this at any time if you want to change up your colors. So next, I'm going to add a few pen lines to this frame. To do that, I'll select the pen tool, then zooming in, I'm just going to click, then I'll hold down shift, and click again. By holding down shift, you'll be creating a pen line in a perfect straight line. At this point, I like how this is looking, but I don't want a rounded edge here. To fix that, I'll come up to my stroke options, and then I'll change the cap from rounded to square. So now you can see we have a nice square edge. I don't want this to be poking out like this, so I'm going to zoom in, and using the arrow keys on my keyboard, I'll just nudge it over to about there. With our first line created, we can now duplicate this to create more lines in this frame. So I'm going to select this, and then to duplicate it and move it in line, I'm going to hold down Shift and Alt or Option on my keyboard. Then I can just drag downwards. Then I'm going to select both of these. And then again, I'll hold down Shift and Alt or Option on my keyboard to drag it across. We now have quite a few pen lines, and I think this is looking really good. I just want to make sure that these are all perfectly centered, so I'm going to select all of them. Then I'm going to drag them over. There we go. And when I see that our snapping lines are perfectly aligned like this, I can release. Then I'll just double check to make sure that they're not poking out on the edges of the oval. All right, I think this is looking really good. The next element that I'm going to add is this flower. You can actually download this flower for free from Heritage Type Company. I'll leave a link in the video description for this website. It has a ton of free illustrations that you can download and use for your projects. So if you have a different theme for your project, feel free to download any of these other ones. For example, if you're a photographer, you might want this camera in your logo, so you could download this one. The one I downloaded is a ways down here. There we go. I, I got this flower from the Rustic Florals, so if you'd like to follow along exactly with what I'm doing, feel free to download these vectors. To put this flower into our image, I'm just going to copy it by pressing Command or Control C. Then I'll return to our logo and press Command or Control V to paste it in. 
Now I can go ahead and resize and position this flower. I want it quite a bit smaller. And I want it to be nice and centered. I think that's looking pretty good. I also want to alter its color so that it matches the color of our frame. To do that, I'm just going to make sure I have the curve selected. You can open up your group like this and select the curves. Then I'll select this fill, and using the color picker, I'll just click and drag it, and then hover it over the frame, and release. Then I can apply the sampled color to our flower. Very nice! A great thing about these illustrations is that you can actually edit the nodes of each of the illustrations. So if I come up here and grab the node tool, then click here, you can see that every single node is editable. For example, maybe you want the bottom stem to just be a little bit longer. You can highlight them and then use the arrow keys to make that adjustment. All right, with our frame and our graphic inserted, it's now time to begin adding text. To start, I'll go ahead and grab the artistic text tool. If you don't see it, you can click on this little gray triangle and then select artistic text tool. Then I'll go ahead and click and drag here. And then I'll type out established. Then I'll go ahead and highlight this text. And I'll come up to our fonts. You can change this text to any font that you'd like. I'm going to choose this font, Avaria Serif Libre. I think it looks pretty nice for this logo. Now I'll select the Move tool, and I can move this text into place. Then I'll hold down Shift and Alt or Option to click and drag it across so that they stay in line with each other. Then I'll go ahead and triple click in here and then type 2020. Now, right now, I can see that they're not perfectly lined up with the center. To make sure that they're snapped to the very center of this oval, I'm going to actually turn off this flower. And it looks like I did something where our text ended up inside of the flower group. So I'll go ahead and select both of these by holding down shift, and then I'll drag them above. So now I'll turn off our flower and select both of these again by holding down shift. Then using the move tool, I'm just going to go ahead and center these. Because this text isn't as long as 2020, I'm going to select it separately and move it in slightly. So the reason why I turned off this flower is because I don't want it to become a snapping candidate and to mess up how things are centered in the document as I move them around. Snapping candidates include the last few elements that you selected, and since I just moved the flower, every single node of the flower now becomes free game to be a snapping point which makes it really hard to work around and snap your objects and your document. You can actually change your snapping candidates up here in the snapping options. I like having six snapping candidates. It makes it easy to line things up. Whenever I have a weird element like this, turning it off is just the easiest way to make sure that you don't end up snapping to it. All right. Now that we have this text inserted, it's now time for the main part of this video, inserting curved text. To do this, I first need a path for my curved text to follow. I'm actually going to scroll to the bottom of our layers and select our ellipse frame. Then I'm going to duplicate it twice by pressing Command or Control J. Now, with this top ellipse selected, I'm just going to come up here and resize it. To do that, I'm going to hold down Shift and Command or Control so that I can resize it by retaining its shape and resizing from its center point. Then, to insert the text on this curve, I'll select the Artistic Text tool, 
and then I'm going to hover over the ellipse until you can see the cursor change from an A to a T. Then I'll go ahead and click, and then I can begin typing for our curved text effect. Now, if your cursor isn't on top of your oval like this, you can press return or enter on your keyboard to switch sides. You want it to be on top so that it's typing facing upward. I'm going to type in flower shop, and that looks pretty good. I'm just going to turn this off for now. Then I'm going to select the other ellipse that we duplicated. And I'll go ahead and resize this, holding Shift and Command or Control, just like the other one, to make it just a bit smaller. Then with our artistic text tool, I'll hover over and click here. Now this is a good time to notice how your cursor is facing. You can see that right now if I begin typing, it's upside down and going in the wrong direction. So I'm going to press enter or return on my keyboard to switch sides, and now I can type in the word that I want. Perfect! With our text inserted, now we can go ahead and alter it to make it look exactly how we want. To start, I'm going to choose a good font. I'll just highlight this text. Then I'll come over to our fonts. Now, because this text is curving inward, if we choose too thick or wide of a font, all of the text will start to overlap. So I'm looking for a font that's tall and skinny. I'm going to use this font because it checks all the boxes, tall and skinny. Then I'm going to increase the size of my font up here. I'm just going to hover in this box and then scroll. And you can see what I mean, that as it gets bigger and more curved inward, the text starts to overlap on itself. To fix this, I'm also going to adjust the tracking and the kerning of this text. So I'll come up to the context toolbar and press here to open up the character panel. Then down here, I can adjust the tracking first. The tracking is how you adjust the spacing between all of the letters. So I'll just hover over here and then scroll to increase this. I think that looks pretty good. With the tracking looking good, now I can adjust the kerning option. So I'll just click in between individual letters. And then as I increase this, the spacing will go up between those two letters. We don't want the letters to be too squished. All right, once you have your letters how you like them, you can go ahead and adjust the font size if you need to. I'm just going to make mine a bit smaller. And you can adjust where your text is positioned by moving this triangle here. There we go. <laughs> I think that's looking really nice. So now I'll move on to adjusting the flower shop text. I'll turn that on and highlight it. And I'm going to use the same font I used for the established text. Then I'll increase the font size. And I'll adjust where it's positioned. And I can see that it's a bit too close to the edge of our oval. To make this more spaced out, I'm going to grab the Move tool. Then while holding down Shift and Command or Control, I'll just move our text inward. There we go. Then using the Artistic Text tool again, I can adjust how this is positioned. Now in this case, because our text is curving outward, there's a lot of extra space between each of the letters. So I'm going to go to our character panel and I just want to decrease the tracking. Then I'll go in between the individual letters to adjust the kerning as needed. Ah, 
As you can see, adjusting the tracking and the kerning is so important when you're working with curved text because think about how these fonts were designed. They were designed to go in perfect straight lines. Once you curve them, that perfect spacing on a straight line can get pretty messed up. Alright, now it's time for some finishing touches. To finish this off, I'm going to insert two dots here and here to kind of give this a little bit of extra detail. So I'll grab the ellipse tool. And to drag out perfect circles, I'm going to click and drag and hold down shift. And that looks pretty good. I'll just adjust its positioning. And I think I want them a bit smaller. To do that, I'm going to select the stroke and I'll turn it off. Then I'll select the move tool and I do like how that's looking. So I'll hold down shift and alt or option and then I'll click and drag it over. Then to make sure both of these are centered, I'm going to select both layers by holding down shift. Then I'll move it so that it's snapped to the center. Now it's time to change up some of the colors. I want the text and these little dots to all be the same color. So first, I'm going to change the color of these ellipses. I want it to be a dark green color to kind of call back to that flower shop theme. I think that looks good. I'll just select the fill color and then sample this green color so that they have the same fill and stroke. Then I'm going to select all of the text by holding down Command or Control and clicking on all of the text layers. Now with all of them selected, I'm going to have the fill selected and then I'll press on the sampled green color. Very nice. And now I can go ahead and turn back on our flower. I can see that the spacing here looks a bit smaller than the spacing here. And even though this flower is centered, technically, because of that, it just looks a little off to me, so I'll use the arrow keys to bump it over a little bit. All right, there we have it. I think our logo looks so great. For this tutorial, we took inspiration from one of the logos that you can get in Heritage Types Ultimate Logo Bundle. We teamed up with Heritage Type to offer you 10% off for their logo bundle. Just use the coupon code Affinity Revolution. The bundle includes over 200 logos, which all come as Affinity Designer files so that you can easily edit them however you want. For example, I like the way this Craft and Trade logo looks, and since it's fully customizable, I can change up the text and the graphic to be more in line with Affinity Revolution. This is super easy to do, and you can see that it even keeps the font and the coloring the same. You can even switch out the illustrations. For example, they have this other great logo that has a camera in it, which is perfect for Affinity Revolution. So I'm just going to select this camera and copy it over. Then all I need to do is resize it and change up its color. And there you go. <laughs> I now have a whole new Affinity Revolution logo. Super fun and super easy. If you want to get this logo bundle, I'll leave a link for it in the video description. Use the coupon code Affinity Revolution to get 10% off, and then you're ready to quickly make professional logos for you or any of your clients. Well, thanks for watching, my friends, and I'll see you in the next Affinity Revolution tutorial.